Hello guys, Termex here, and welcome back to another New World video. And in today's New World video, I want to go over my dexterity build guide and setups that I use when I play Outpost Rush. More specifically, all the builds I use, the armor and gear set I use, what perks I prefer to run, what gems I like to run, and basically go over everything a dexterity player should know if you're looking to improve yourself or just get a few pointers from Outpost Rush. But then again, I don't know everything in the world, so if there's something I misinterpret in this video or I'm just completely wrong about, feel free to let me know in the comments. I don't want to make this intro too long, but I do want to say I am very, very close to 10,000 subscribers. So if you guys can help me make that happen, it would really mean a lot. It's crazy that we're about to hit 10K. But anyway, on with today's topic with dexterity builds. Now, I'm going to be posting a lot of Outpost Rush clips on screen of varying moments when I'm using different armor, different weapons, different builds, different setups. And a lot of these builds are specific to my channel already, but I will go over the ones that are not on my channel in today's video. One thing I do want to get across before getting into this in general is the availability for us dexterity players to even make an impact on Outpost Rush. And what do I mean by that? When I say this, there's a lot of people making builds with muskets, with bows, and they're hitting people for like 4,000 damage. And when you guys do it yourselves, or even like me, it shocked me by surprise. And I was like, hey, I'm hitting for like 1,000, sometimes 2,000, and 3,000 occasionally. And I'm running the same exact setup or maybe even a better setup. And honestly, I want to say it's the heavy armor meta that is just plaguing a lot of servers right now. Your server might be different from my server. My server might be different from Jonathan's server or whoever the hell else is playing this game. But everyone's server is different. So maybe there's a light armor meta in a server that I don't know about. But generally, when it comes to endgame outpost rush, I see a lot of heavy armor squads. And as a dexterity player, that's a big no-no for us. Because a lot of tanks are starting to take on the role of putting the anti-thrust gems, so we do less range damage. So they're up against people melee all the time, and we're just wasting our time tickling them to death. And I just want to get that across, because a lot of people are going to ask, on my server, this is terrible. On my server, this never works. And honestly, I feel your pain. I have some outpost rush games where people are running medium, or sometimes even light armor. And I'm like, hey, this is going to be a fun fight. But most of the time, I'm just bowing enemies and shooting the shit out of them and it doesn't matter because they have heavy armor and a healer pocket healing him constantly anyway one last thing i do want to get across is when it comes to this build yes you are using light armor a lot of the times but you don't have to be secluded to light armor it's honestly just the way i love to play this game and moving around quickly is just my go-to thing to do now let's get into the generalized thing when it comes to dexterity builds and mine really is rocking that light armor like i said previously i do have most of the shade walker sets and I'm actually working on getting a legendary 600 gear score version of this set. I'll go over it in a separate video once I get this. But it's going to be a full legendary set. I just need to get the materials. I've been leveling up my refining, as you could see by my iron wood. But I do have the Shade Walker helmet, which gives me 22 dexterity, which is nice. And I do have some generic medium chest piece. I only run a single piece of medium armor, which is my chest, because it provides the most elemental physical resistance. Once again, with a dexterity roll with some luck so I can get my gear score runs a little bit better. 
I also have the Shade Walker hand wraps. Now, these are 599s. These were one gear score away from 600s, and it would have been a legendary. But, you know, it's fine. I have to live with that. Very good gloves. 24 dexterity as well. Over to the Shade Walker pants. We do have 22 more dexterity with Insatiable Gravity Well, which is a great, great perk, but not for what we're doing. And finally, I have these Primordial Cloth Boots of the Ranger, and a Wrecking Ball penetrates 19% of target's armor. This is okay for wars, not going to rely on it, but it's a nice little thing to have, plus 24 more dexterity. Over into our amulets and all that, I do have a necklace with 22 dexterity with Purify, which makes us lose all of our debuffs. When we're below 50% health, it just removes them all. Now my ring has Constitution with Poisoning. Basically, the Poison... That I apply to people lasts 6% longer, which is amazing for the poison shot on the bow. And I deal 4.6% more thrust damage, so everything I'm doing with all these thrust weapons is just more and more damage. And finally for my earring, I have 22 constitution with lightning damage absorption. I do have the engineering roll because I am going to be specking into engineering eventually. But nimble is very nice as we get 9% stamina regeneration. Now as for my weapons, I have the heaven splitter spear. I made a video on that spear on my channel. And a pretty nice bow with 29 dexterity and penetrating rapid shot. So the final arrow of that gives us more damage. And over to my rapier, I just have a... It's the spirit of oblivion. It's not a great rapier, but it's not terrible at the same time. Leeching Fury is nice for keeping our health up. And my utility belt is usually some sort of normal potion, some sort of regen potion, honing stones and water to reduce weight. Water weighs a lot. And it's some nice passive health regeneration if you really need it. And ignore the mana potions. That's usually where my regeneration potions would be, but I just don't have any at the moment. Now for the builds, the bow build is pretty straightforward. I'll show it on screen right now. I don't want to waste too much time talking about this build. I already do have this build on my channel, which is my bow and hatchet war build. If you want to go with the in-depths of this build and why I chose certain skills. But I do like using this. I do love using a different setup with rapid shot alongside evade and penetrating sometimes. Some of those clips will have that kind of build. And for that... Very similar to this, just choose different skills, and it's really not that bad. It's more or less a 1v1 situation, but with this build and outpost rush, putting all those damage over time effects on enemies, plus the penetrating shot, really punishes teams that love to group up. And that's really all I see in outpost rush, a army of 10 to 20 people, the whole team basically on one point, so everyone being bunched up will be a huge downfall for them since you're running this type of build. Now for the musket, I didn't use a musket in any of my clips, so I'm not going to really go over that. If you really want to see my personal build, this is what it is at the moment. But I do know that there is a lot of very, very nice skills here. It's just I'm not a big fan of the musket itself. Maybe it's because of the heavy armor meta on my server, but it just really doesn't do enough damage in my opinion to warrant using it. As for the spear, I've actually switched around my spear a little bit, and by that I just mean my old, old spear build video that almost came out an entire month ago. I did use Javelin, but since then I switched to Vault Kick, and for this build, Coupe de Grasse is a optional as it locks you into a long animation, but if you can use it when you want to use it, you don't always have to proc this when you're done, but overall this is probably one of my favorite weapons in the game, and this is basically the whole build itself. Vault Kick is nice for those tanks, Perforate is good for the bonus damage onto tanks. And Sweep is just probably the best spear ability in the game. It's so fun knocking people on their ass, and on top of that, you have Grit with it, so they can't stop the attack. It's really, really nice. Now for my Rapier, I don't really run anything blood-wise, because I just noticed that with healers, it's not going to happen. And if you're in light armor and you could proc bleeds multiple times, then you're probably not even getting shot at. So I like to run the good old Riposte, which helps out, or Riposte, however you want to pronounce it. It helps out with being a little bit tanky when it comes to actually dodge rolling, and it helps out in certain situations. Now, as for Flashe, I, I hope that's how you pronounce that, it's very good movement speed-wise and gets you out of sticky situations, and it does a lot of damage. And I have Flurry because it just also does a crap ton of damage. It's kind of hard to judge a Rapier build because all the trees are like so one-sided that it's hard to be versatile with it. But just go along with the skills that give you more damage, and you should be fine. And finally, here is my attributes. I will show some more clips on screen while I talk about this. I am running 338 dex, which is a little bit over cap, which is okay. But for some people, it's just what they like to do. And I've noticed the damage is pretty nice. And recently, I've been rocking 100 constitution, giving me 9,292 health. And that is honestly pretty nice. Overall, I've noticed my tankiness isn't terrible. And... It comes down to the point where I've almost spec for medium armor, but it's kind of hard for me to avoid that light dodge roll. That light dodge roll is just amazing in my opinion. Now the debate on running 100 constitution over 50 constitution, or even just no constitution in general, 
is very heavily debated upon in the light armor community, but I will have to say at least 50 is where you want to shoot for. Because even though we're using light armor, proccing this constitution lets us stay alive a little bit longer. And honestly, in testing, I used to run 400 decks, but the damage difference, especially with this heavy armor meta, isn't really that big of a difference. <laughs> now I'm going to show some clips and basically some general tips. When you're playing this build, don't be so aggressive. You have no reason to be aggressive with this build. You're actually quite the opposite. That dodge roll, you could use it to your advantage when you want to catch up to somebody, or you could use it to your advantage when you want to get away from somebody, but you're not the front lines, you're not the tanks, and you're not even up there with the mages. You're more or less behind all of them. The mages usually have a range on the ice gauntlet and the fire staff, but your bow and or musket does not, so you could stay pretty far back and still do a lot of damage. And if you are getting targeted, that's just the people wasting their time on you when it could be better spent putting damage into your tanks and or healers. As you can see with some of these clips, I am proccing all these different abilities on their musket users because they're sitting back sniping, and you're basically countering that so they're not such a big deal for the rest of your team to handle. And then there's other times where when we're basically above everyone, when they're grouped up, and you're putting all these damage over time effects on them, and it just, it, it's a lot. It's a lot for them to handle. And I will say, I didn't really mention it too much or made a build of, about this. I mean, I did in my one war bow build, but with this hatchet setup... You could run this hatchet build right here, throw that stinky hatchet for the anti-healing, switch to your bow, rain of arrows, poison shot, penetrating shot, and that's enough to get a whole group of enemies like, what, what what's happening here? You're cutting their heals by 20%, you're cutting the amount of damage they could deal by 20%, you're doing a lot here. But overall, that is just my personal tips and guide to this whole setup. If you're running dexterity and you're looking for better things to do an outpost rush, remember, only use your spear and rapier for when it comes to those close engagements, but it's probably best for you to avoid them most of the time. You're not going to win a 2v3. Maybe you'll win a 2v3 if you if you have a good enough tank, but most of the time, you want your fights to be more mono e mono one-on-one -on -one because that's where you're going to win. You have mobility on your side, you have damage over time on your side, and you have stun locking on your side. But I do hope this video helped all my dexterity players out quite a bit because after, after all this time of being a light armor dexterity player on my server, I really start to notice that it's it's so off meta at this point because <laughs> so many people are running heavy armor, warhammer, heavy armor, great axe, heavy armor, hatchet, heavy armor, life staff. It's literally all I see on my server. So maybe this may inspire you to try this out. And even though it's not the best thing to do right now, PVP wise, it's off meta. It's a very off meta setup. Bow takes a lot of skill to get used to probably takes more skill than a musket at the end of the day because it is not a hit scan weapon it has projectiles and drop off and it's kind of hard to hit hit boxes when they're really far away when it you have to take an account to drop off and all that fun stuff but i do hope this video helped you guys out in any sort of way and if it did please make sure you guys consider liking today's video as it helps me out a lot and spreads my videos out more to the new world community make sure you guys subscribe so you never miss out on another video from me but you guys have a terrific day make sure you guys stay safe and i'll see you guys later